In this presentation, we're going to discuss the challenges that web applications present for security. Uh, we're going to talk about the scale of the problem, issues like rate of change of code and the complexity of code. We're going to then discuss DevOps, which is kind of a modern and somewhat mature practice that's been adopted by the software industry, and how to get from there to DevSecOps so that security testing is part of your automated development loop. Um, we're also going to talk about special considerations that apply to testing web applications. And we're going to give you some insight into where you start. So if you're new to DevOps entirely or if you're new to DevSecOps specifically, uh, you may be in a situation where you're retrofitting projects that you've had under build control for a while, or you may be starting fresh with a new project. So we're going to talk about both approaches and things that you can do. And we're going to present a specific solution for snapping into CI CD pipelines uh, with a product called Venari DevOps, and we're going to discuss how that completes the DevSecOps loop for web applications. So let's get going. So why is this a problem? What's, what's the big deal with web applications and security? Well, it, it's a multi-pronged problem. The first issue is that the web is just positively huge. Um, everyone knows about the growth of page-based applications since the internet started to now. That's, that's had a hockey stick curve as far as diagramming the growth. Um, Page-based applications have kind of given way to APIs and mobile backends as far as where most of the new code effort is being expended. And the Internet of Things, industrial IoT, sometimes called OT, that's an even bigger slice, which we'll talk about a little more later. Uh, and, and how is this tested? For the most part, uh, penetration testing is manual. It's done by paid consultants uh, who operate at a very high hourly rate. Uh, if anyone has people in their organization to do QA slash security testing on web applications, it's typically with manual tools. Um, there are good ones out there, Burp Suite, Zap, uh, Attack Proxy, but it doesn't really scale. Uh, there's just too many applications. Typically, security testing is not automated. That would be the exception, not the rule. And the code changes daily, so you invalidate the testing you did the day before because at the current Agile pace of change, you're very likely going to have a new build the next day that has new code and changed code, and so you don't know if you're still secure even though you were the day before. So as your application gets out of date, you have to manually test it again, and that aggravates the lack of scalability problem. Uh, manual testing via proxy capture is a slow process. These outsourced pen tests are very, very expensive. Uh, there is an option for paid software as a service scans, but that has disadvantages in that you can only test public facing um, assets. So testing QA or staging environments is either impossible or at least very, very difficult. So you, you can't really get into a nightly build discipline with those kind of tools and solutions. There are desktop tools out there, but they're sort of an older generation and they're generally manually operated by a single person. And none of these are uh, CI CD friendly solutions, none of them scale well. Uh, what you typically see is that automation use cases are an afterthought in build pipelines where security is concerned. And if you just want to grade this whole situation, um, it, it's currently in a state, you, you'd say it's, it's kind of a fail as a repeatable, scalable practice. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what you can do about that. To really underscore the scope of this problem and the size of the HTTP footprint in the world, this graph of the growth of IoT connected devices really drives the point home. If you look closely at this, you can see that these, these are counted in tens of billions with a B. Uh, human readable pages, as mentioned before, have kind of given way to API endpoints as the largest growth area. And at this point, I think it's fair to say that microcontroller based IoT devices are an even bigger, maybe by a couple of order of magnitude, orders of magnitude over what's there for APIs and pages. So this attack surface is just enormous and presents an extremely large target for bad actors. In addition to the sheer number of endpoints and applications that exist, there's an additional layer to the problem, and that's the size and complexity of the code bases themselves. This tends to only increase over time. Code doesn't get simpler. It doesn't get smaller. Um, software testing is difficult already, but testing web applications brings 
this additional complexity of the interconnected parts in the browser, in the server, in various other machines like APIs and uh, servers that are connected to affiliates for things like advertising and tracking. Typical web application code is composed of many components, um, from client-side JavaScript libraries to multiple server application modules. Sometimes the server is composed of multiple concurrent processes running in the operating system and written in different languages. There can be multiple API endpoints or microservices. So this is a large mesh of interacting um, digital services. And the application inherits, it inherits the vulnerabilities present in each of the components. Security testing is generally an afterthought and people do it quote unquote at the end of a project. But realistically, uh, if you have code that you care about and it's providing value to your organization, that code tends to live forever. There's really no such thing as the end of a project. So, so you need to be continuously monitoring and tracking the security of this evolving code, especially if you're snapping new components in and out or connecting it to new backend services. Um, a single code check-in for a new feature can open up new security holes as well. So this is another reason why continuous security analysis is a must because releases are just happen, happening more and more rapidly. Um, this is kind of testified to by things like uh, the software bill of materials as a movement, uh, software compositional analysis. The industry has a, a firm grasp of the idea that security comes from the sum of the parts. And so when you look at all these applications and all this individual complexity in the code base, it'll make you ask, like, is there any hope? What can we do? How, how, how do we cope with this problem? What people do now is kind of a Band-Aid approach. Uh, typically, they're just overwhelmed, and they either don't do testing that often. Maybe they do testing at the end of a milestone and hope for the best during patches. Maybe they just test a subset of their applications, quote, unquote, the important ones. Um, but with anything that's publicly facing on an IP address that anybody in the world can hit, it's really hard to know what's important and what's not. So this Band-Aid approach is, again, not going to scale. So in the coming um, slides, we're going to talk about what you can actually do about this. How can you get ahead of this problem and start incrementally adding uh, a continuous security assessment loop? So turning DevOps into DevSecOps. So to summarize the problem statement and kind of the state of the industry, uh, the web is everywhere. Anything that speaks HTTP and is on a public-facing IP address is potentially a target. All of those applications have source code behind them. That source code is changing early and often. Uh, daily is typical, so they're typically not tested continuously. Functional testing is automated. There are continuous integration, continuous delivery pipelines, usually called CICD pipelines. That's a pretty mature practice in the industry, but security testing is not automated, if it's even there at all. And so this typical approach is to just do your best with a subset of, of applications and to augment that with manual security testing. So we have a big scale problem and we need to discuss how to fix that. To begin thinking about a roadmap, from where we are now, which maybe for most organizations is some sort of CI/CD pipeline approach to DevOps, uh, and to get to something that looks like DevSecOps, we need to kind of look at where the practices are mature and, and where we can add new steps to the pipeline. So as mentioned before, most DevOps pipelines don't have automated security testing. So the most appropriate place to put um, testing of web applications is in the integration testing phase after deployment. So let's contrast that to just doing a static analysis of code that's not deployed and running. What we're advocating here is that you do dynamic testing, sometimes called DAST or dynamic application security testing. And dynamic in this context means that the application is deployed and it's running in a realistic approximation of a production environment. That means, you know, realistic seed data, connectivity to back-end services, um, the whole range of complexity that we mentioned in earlier slides is present and available for the automation to run against. Uh, teams need a concrete starting point, and so this integration test phase is a good place to take a DevOps pipeline and start building out um, security practices. So to put that SEC and DevSecOps 
you probably need to be incremental. And this is going to require tools that expose API control points. This is kind of the secret sauce. Your, your DAS tooling has to be controllable by some sort of an orchestrator, and we'll talk more about that in a later slide. When testing uh, web application code, there are some special considerations for testing in general, but for security um, testing in particular. So static analysis is an important technique. It's an important tool in the tool belt. Um, in sophisticated organizations that actually do have security built into their pipeline already, you'll find static analysis to be quite common. It makes sense, but it's not quite adequate for testing a web application for the reasons mentioned before. So um, the program flow in a web app is across multiple computers and multiple code bases. A code base is, when I, when I say that, I just mean some, um, some amount of code that uh, controls a part of the application. Uh, the JavaScript code is running in the browser. The application code is running on a web server. There may be dynamic network calls to backend APIs and other external servers like ad trackers and um, things like that. So to get kind of a hacker's outside-in perspective of your security posture, you really need some kind of dynamic security testing that has that realistic approximation of the complexity of the fully deployed production application. So it can't just be code that's sitting there. It, it needs to be running. It needs to have the full function of, of the system available for an automated scanner to inspect. And DAST fits perfectly into the deploy and monitor phases of the uh, DevSecOps loop in this integration phase because you can deploy the application and all of its dependencies and uh, then orchestrate an automated analysis tool, like a DAST scanner, which we're going to talk about, and actually do that analysis of um, the running app in addition to the static uh, code analysis that you've already done in an earlier phase. So these two things are not at odds with one another. They're very complementary. But to really feel like you've gotten a good test of your web app code, you need DAST and static analysis. Our goal in this presentation is ultimately to describe a framework for how to think about a completely automated pipeline that goes from checkout and build to functional tests to deployment to monitoring and then feeding back on itself. Um, and to find a place for dynamic analysis in that. And uh, in addition to that, we want to discuss some adoption strategies. So the starting point could be that you you have nothing. You're starting completely from scratch. You, you, you really don't even have CI, CD. I think that's probably rare, but uh, that's fair. That happens. Um, your alternate starting point might be that you have a DevOps pipeline with no security testing at all. Um, a third alternate may be that you have DevSecOps. Uh, the toe is already in the water and that static analysis or maybe compositional analysis is part of that and you just need to add DAST to complete um, the array of testing that you can do for web applications. So in this picture, the Jenkins logo really represents just the idea of a pipeline orchestrator. An orchestrator is a single point of control for every step uh, as we progress down the pipeline from code checkout to getting to the very end where it's fully deployed. Um, and the build can be failed if any uh, gating criteria is not met, including failing a security test. Jenkins is not really a strict requirement, but it's a very popular example. Um, and the diagram here is just a really simplified subset of a DevOps pipeline. So what we're showing in the middle is that after checkout and build, there's some kind of functional testing, um, and then the application is staged and ultimately goes into production. So we're going to show kind of with a single slide transition where we're going to put DAST in this pipeline. So in between staging and production is the most appropriate location. Uh, a staging environment can have um, a simulated production environment that has realistic seed data and has um, deployments of the uh, dependent services and any other kind of dependency that the application has, including databases. So once that's in place and it's completely safe to hammer on that and do potentially destructive testing, uh, which DAST can be potentially destructive. You can pollute a database with quite a bit of data if the attacks succeed, but that's the kind of insight that you want to know about. So uh, once you've passed a security test, you would redeploy 
to production. So this is a simplified diagram, but it gets to the essence of uh, DAST falling somewhere between staging and production, and this is going to be the framework we use to talk about putting Venari DevOps into an existing pipeline or um, on a new project. So we'll talk about that in the oncoming slides. A good place to start when gathering information about DevSecOps is the Department of Defense Enterprise DevSecOps Reference Design. This is a really good document. It's a good framework for thinking about distributed security testing and automation. Um, it's got really clean descriptions and nomenclature, and it's a great source for just general education on DevSecOps goals, concepts, the vocabulary, and some examples. The key concept that um, is at the center of it is the software factory model. And you can think of, make a mental model of just automated assembly lines at physical manufacturing plants. Um, a software factory in DOD terms is something that contains multiple pipelines, um, hosting environments, tools and scripts, various process workflows, artifact repositories. The goal of all this is to fully automate the build, test, delivery, and release actions uh, of software development. And the key enabler to all of this is the use of containers. So um, with containers, you can host the applications under test, uh, potentially even more than one at a time, so you can clone them, and the test infrastructure and software tools itself. So um, if you've got DAS security tools with REST API control points and you want to deploy them into multiple environments, putting them in containers is, is a really easy way to accomplish that. You can run functional and integration tests side by side with security tests in parallel if you have cloning. And you can even deploy elastic analysis um, topologies for Venari. We'll show some examples of that later. Um, but you can use an off-the-shelf orchestrator. Jenkins was the example that we put in a previous slide, and that's just the single entity that runs the build test monitor pipeline. And the key takeaway is, is to make sure that you use modern DAS tooling that's fully controllable via API calls, and we're going to get into a deeper case study of Venari DevOps Edition in the upcoming slides, and that's that's an example of something that is fully controllable by REST APIs and kind of enables the DAST and the DevSecOps. The first concrete step in turning DevOps into DevSecOps is to choose the right DAST tools that really enable security automation. Um, the goal is to take any kind of repeated manual involvement and eliminate it. Uh, older desktop DAST tools were not built for API control. It's kind of bolted on to desktop architectures, so you need to pick something that's built, purpose-built, for REST API control uh, and that runs well in containers so that you can scale. And Venari DevOps Edition is purpose-built for DevSecOps. Automation is the main feature. It's not an add-on like in desktop product. Um, its foundation is REST API control that allows the orchestrator to automate DAST um, for all scan capabilities. So job provisioning, runtime control, import-export of artifacts, user management to enable team use cases, um, to enable simple application onboarding. So when you've got a new application and you want to put it into a test loop, somebody's got to go through the steps of actually setting up the configuration so that the automated testing can happen repetitively in the future. Venari makes that very simple. It's fully cross-platform, so you're not limited on your choice of operating systems. It's going to work equally well on Linux or Windows containers and um, the UI components will work on Mac OS as well. It's container friendly from the start. It was built with containers in mind. And um, an additional use case that's added is an elastic processing model that allows you to scale both up and out. And what I mean by that is if you have a lot of applications that you need to be scanning at the same time, then you need many instances of the container that have a scanner running inside them doing those scans. Uh, some jobs are really, really large, however. Some applications have thousands or tens of thousands of pages or features, and to test those could take multiple days, and that's not really a DevOps-friendly time frame. So you can run multiple containers in parallel, uh, multiple job nodes in the Venari architecture, and speed up those scans substantially. So Elastic is a powerful feature for controlling throughput and improving it. All of this is built on top of headless Chromium, so that uh, the rapidly evolving browser features, frameworks, and web standards um, can be kept up with. And it also imports functional test artifacts like Postman collections and Selenium scripts. This allows you to 
layer security testing on top of your existing functional test, and this is the, the key enabler for that incremental adoption that we mentioned earlier. You don't have to start from scratch. If you have functional test artifacts, you should be able to onboard them into your DAST control and test loop. So the Venari DevOps tool is what we're going to use to discuss a concrete example of implementing DevSecOps and putting DAST into the pipeline. This diagram shows the same pipeline that we had earlier where we injected DAST into the processing between deployment to QA and deployment to either staging or production. Uh, we, we, we put the SEC in the DevOps loop in an earlier slide. In this slide, we're specifically showing that Venari DevOps Edition is the DAS tool that's in that slot. And Jenkins can call API endpoints, and Venari exposes REST APIs to become part of this controlled set of pipeline steps. So this is a really high-level diagram, and I'm going to go under the hood a little bit and talk about what's really going on with this architecture. So this is a, a, a level of detail lower, and note that Jenkins can deploy multiple web applications that need to be tested at the same time. So on the bottom right, we have three web apps being tested. Also note that these scans are performed by the job nodes at the top right. So Jenkins has told the master node to deploy job nodes, and now they're scanning multiple applications at the same time. There's a special case inside the gray box, and this is an elastic job. And as a reminder, Elastic is I've got more than one uh, container or job node processing the, processing the scan at the same time. So for a really large application with lots of pages and lots of complexity, but you still need to get that job done quickly, you can deploy that as an Elastic job. And the master node will orchestrate all of that on behalf of Jenkins, and this is all initiated through REST API calls. So at a high level, what's going on here is Jenkins pulls source code and builds and deploys the live web applications. Then Jenkins calls the Venari master node to create multiple security scanners inside of containers. Uh, the web apps under test are also in containers. Then Venari scans these web applications using the modern DAST algorithms and figures out interesting security findings and compliance insights and saves those in data artifact repositories. Uh, then Jenkins pulls these security findings from the Venari master node and stores the data in various defect ticketing or man uh, ticket management systems or vulnerability repositories. Some specific examples uh, like Code DX would be, would be one, uh, JIRA ticketing system would be another one. And then Jenkins spins down the various containers uh, and proceeds to the next step in the DevOps loop if everything passes the stage gate. So that's pretty much it in detail. Venari is a REST API driven architecture. Jenkins is an orchestrator that is uh, very well suited to making calls on REST APIs, and this is a fully orchestrated multiple pipeline scenario where multiple apps are being tested, and at least one of them is being tested elastically. And this scales up uh, to a pretty good degree. So if you had hundreds or thousands of applications, you might have you know, many of, of these kinds of clusters inside of individual pipelines, but this basic architecture describes how Venari interoperates with an orchestrator to do security testing. So zooming back out one level, we could revisit the idea of the software factory uh, model for, for testing architecture. And in the specific DAST context, it, it looks like this. This is just a quick review of the orchestrator being the, the focal point of controlling everything, every step in the pipeline. Jenkins here is just a popular example, but not a requirement. Uh, the Docker whale logo just indicates containers. Uh, it's a very powerful tool to deploy containerized web applications that you're testing, to de deploy containerized dependencies of those web, ap web applications, including things like databases or back-end microservices, um, anything you need to replicate production environments for the web applications that you're testing. The Venari node uh, with the wolf icon is just showing that these REST APIs are being called by Jenkins to kick off the DAST testing portion of the pipeline, and when that's completed, the um, Jenkins will, will deploy the applications to the next stage in the pipeline. And then the last bullet is just a reminder that there is um, 
an elastic use case. So you can deploy extra binary scanners to enable the distributed analysis of really large applications. If you've got time constraints and you want that tight loop to continue, but you still want thorough testing of larger applications, Elastic is uh, a very powerful enabler of that use case. We talked about the two scenarios of starting from an existing pipeline that has no security or possibly only static analysis or something that's not DAST. And the alternate scenario was you've got a greenfield project, something brand new, and uh, you want to uh, figure out where to start. So we're going to talk about that first scenario here. To retrofit an existing pipeline and add DAST security automation, the um, best place to start is with existing artifacts. So. Venari allows imports of things like traffic captures from popular tools and formats, which may have already um, been proxy captures of functional tests in progress. Another important import format is Postman collections for API testing. Venari is fully compatible with Postman um, collections as an import source. And then Selenium scripts is a very popular way of testing the web application behavior in a QA environment and trying to automate it. So Venari is able to convert Selenium scripts into what are called Venari workflows. Similar concept, but it's a way to reuse your existing functional test artifacts to onboard new applications for security testing. And as the team gains experience in doing this, they can start onboarding new applications cleanly using just the Venari user interface. But uh, as a quick start, you can use things like Postman and Selenium data for new projects and greenfield development, uh, the guidance is, is different. Um, the sky is kind of the limit, so it's, it's important to adopt good practices, get a strong framework in place, uh, and lay down proper requirements at the beginning to set yourself up for success. So the recommendation being put forward here is to use the software factory model from the DOD DevSecOps reference spec. That's, that's not a hard, fast rule, but that's a really good source of information and a really good model to start from if you don't have any experience and you're building your, your pipeline from scratch uh, or adding security into it for the first time. It's just a really good reference. Um, if it's a contracted project and you're writing requirements, uh, it's important to make testability and the continuous monitoring use cases into formal requirements and deliverables. Remember, code li tends to live forever. And um, if you make design for test, design for security test into requirements and part of the deliverable, um, you'll be miles ahead of the game when that project is delivered. Um, important to use containers, uh, replicate production environments as realistically as possible. And that's just a best practice for all kinds of automated testing, but it equally applies for security testing. And because the Venari DevOps tool um, makes heavy use of containers, this is a, a really clean fit. So configuring the orchestrator to invoke DAS scanning uh, by calling the Venari masternode, that's the best practice that we're recommending here. And then just a reminder that there is the elastic DAS scan use case for really large applications. And that's, that's just a matter of configuring certain applications to have multiple job nodes coordinate. So that's how you would go from clean sheet of paper or maybe a pipeline that just had no security concepts in it at all and uh, you know building requirements out and building a model to get security testing in there in a good solid way. The last topic that I want to touch on is about compliance. Measuring it, uh, using the tool and looking at the artifacts that it produces to prove that you are complying with certain security practices, that you are doing proper security testing, mapping the findings to the appropriate risk management framework controls. So I'm going to just show a quick example of some of the data artifacts that come out of the pipeline that we've been discussing in this presentation. And it's just an example of, of a finding and how the pipeline and Venari produced the finding and the mapping. But um, for organizations that find themselves in the position where they have to prove compliance measurements for authority to operate, ATO, um, it's important to know that these tools can provide ready-made evidence that can be presented to ATO uh, assessors or auditors. So that's just an important thing to build into your pipeline. So if you're, if you're 
creating interesting findings in addition to giving those to QA or developers to remediate, you can also package those artifacts up to prove that you're practicing good compliance procedures. So let's take a look at a concrete example there. This is uh, a SQL injection finding. That's a database attack. The left square is just a snippet from an exported PDF file. Uh, this data is also available in JSON and XML formats. That's, that's not really the most important thing here, but this is an automatically created artifact. And Venari, in step one, finds the SQL injection. That's what you care about, automatically finding it. And it presents evidence uh, in step two below. And then it maps that into a compliance check in the middle square. And there are a couple of frameworks. One is OWASP. The other one is um, one of the NIST frameworks on the right. So this, this compliance mapping, all the way from a finding, presenting evidence, and, and mapping it to a category. This is uh, good evidence that you're practicing automated security in the right way and you know actually remediating these results. So this is one specific example. These are artifacts created by Venari, which was the DAS tool that we used in this presentation. For a free trial and a demo of Venari, visit us at our website and click through to the request demo form. and. Um, if you're already in the middle of a demo or starting one, in addition to this video that you just watched, there are more resources. Um, so navigate to the resources menu from the website and download the Minari Evaluation Guide. It's got a lot of the same content in print form and a little more detail, plus some information on test applications and where to get them and how to get them configured to kind of explore the feature set of Minari a little more fully on applications that are vulnerable and um, totally legal scan. So that's it.